Hey there friends, what's going on? It's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming and another video about Assassin's Creed Valhalla and the Siege of Paris. We already released a video talking about all of the new short swords in the game, so we had to do the same for the new scythe weapon type. This is a really interesting weapon. It's a two-hander, but you can dual wield them if you have the heavy dual wield skill in the bear tree. And we just wanted to make sure that everybody had an idea of all the different scythes in the game, where to find them without wasting your time. We know that you guys don't want five minutes of content stretched out into 15 minutes. So we're gonna kick this thing off with a map. This is a very simple graphic showing you where each of the scythes are. Now at the moment, there are only four options in the game, but you know how Ubisoft operates. There's probably gonna be some paid content, some future DLCs that will include more sites in the game. Now that you've had a good long minute to look at all of the site locations, let's dive in and actually talk about the weapons themselves. The first scythe I want to talk about is the Scythe of Revolt. This is actually a main story quest reward. You are going to get this no matter what. It is not an optional piece of content, but it is a relatively good weapon. The effect increases your speed when surrounded by three or more enemies. I know based on all of the other videos we've done in the past that people really enjoy that effect on their weapons, whether it's a great sword, a Dane axe, or in this case, the Scythe of Revolt. It's not a game changer. I don't think it's the best scythe in the game, but it's definitely worth checking out because that plus 20 to speed could be woven into your playstyle based on the build that you're going for. The next weapon I want to talk about is the Scythe of Tribulation. This is a wolf-themed weapon that sets your weapon on fire after a successful light or heavy finisher hit. This lasts for 10 seconds, and if you know anything about me, I love lighting my weapons on fire and doing status damage to any enemies in the game. And unlike the other weapon we just talked about, the Scythe of Tribulation can be picked up at any point in time once you reach the southern part of Paris. The entrance to the mini dungeon that's hiding the Scythe of Tribulation is actually out back behind the flooded church. It's a flooded crypt. You dive down in there, work your way through, you're gonna have to deal with rats and all sorts of stuff, but at the end of the tunnel, you will eventually find this weapon. Again, it's one that I really like. I love status effects on my weapons. I love being able to do that relatively consistently as long as you're getting finishers off. Is it top tier? Probably not, but I could see it working into a number of different builds based on play styles. Next, let's talk about the Bloodied Sight. This is an interesting bear weapon that gives you the chance to kill an enemy 30% when their health is below 30%. That means that any attack after they reach that threshold could instantly kill them. Do I think that's a super valuable effect on a weapon? Not really. If they're that low, you're probably doing just fine. Assassin's Creed is not like Dark Souls, where that last 25% is actually a challenge. So I don't see a lot of application for this weapon, but I do appreciate them doing something a little different, not just a standard stat boost. There's actually something unique at play here, and I really appreciate that when developers do something a little different, not just a passive boost, but something that just changes up the natural cadence of the game. The Bloodied Scythe is actually right next to one of the sink points in the northern part of Francia, just west of Compendium, so head over there, find your way into the barn, and pick up this weapon. The final scythe currently in the game is the Wretched Scythe, and this is probably my favorite one from a stat perspective. To get this one, you need to head to the northern part of Francia. This is probably as far north and east as you can get, and you'll notice there's a little villa there. You have to sneak around, pick up a key, head into the basement, and grab the Wretched Scythe. Now, this weapon is fantastic, increasing your critical chance after a successful blade hit. That's going to increase your crit chance by plus 40 for 3.5 seconds, every time you hit somebody with your blade. Pretty incredible. I could see this working very nicely with any sort of crit build in the game. Crit builds are one of my favorite ways to play Assassin's Creed. I love doing high damage to any enemy that I'm encountering, and using something like the Wretched Scythe could fit nicely into that style of play. Now the tooltip is a bit weird. Successful blade hit is not something that we've seen on any other weapon in the game. And since Wrath of the Druids, I've actually had a hard time tracking all of my passive bonuses because they don't appear on my screen. But I think it's as simple as when you hit with this weapon, you're going to get that plus 40 chance to crit. That's really powerful. And again, I could see it working into a number of builds. If you guys think it's something else, let us know in the comments. I'm all about spreading a wealth of information to our entire community. So if I'm wrong, I'll say it and you can be right. That's totally fine. And there you have it, friends, the four sites that you can currently get in the Siege of Paris content in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. 
Like I said, these will most likely expand over time with more DLCs and more paid content coming our way, but for now, you can pick these four up as long as you have the Siege of Paris. No additional purchases required. And as always, if you have any questions about getting any of these sites, let us know in the comments and we'll help you out. Also, if you guys did enjoy this video, please hit that thumbs up and of course, subscribe. We're not about stretching five minutes of content into 15 minutes of content. And if you appreciate that, we would appreciate your support. You can also join us on Discord. We've got a great community of around 7,000 members spread across dozens of great games. So check out the link below to join today. Finally, if you like everything we're doing here at Legacy Gaming and you want to help us out even more, you can now do so by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks, you're helping evolve our channel and take the community to the next level. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.